The number of confirmed deaths has passed 200. The governor has called a state of emergency. Oh, hundreds and hundreds of Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Last of Us Survivor Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the graveyard in Billstown, which is chapter 3. So at the beginning of this, uh, your new acquaintance, the ever so paranoid Bill, uh, is going to let you in on his stash around here. As you can see in this corner, there is Tools Level 1, which gives you the upgrade capacity to improve your weapons. And the way that the upgrade system works is, is kind of interesting. You have to have a certain affinity with the tools, which is the tool grade that you just saw then. And you have to have a certain amount of gear or parts to, to craft the upgrades. And you need both of them in tandem at one given moment to increase anything. And the upgrades themselves are pretty much preferential. I don't think you're going to need any of them. So there's not going to be a situation where you could have done this if you had that. It's not like that. It's more preference. It's more personal choice. And I think I'm going to do a playthrough where I don't upgrade anything. Just to see if it makes much of a difference. Because to be completely honest, I don't think it will. Because headshots are devastating. None of the guns get any better as far as their performance goes. When it comes to things like damage output. There, there's, there's only, I think, the rifle that gets a damage perk. And a couple get armor piercing, things like that, which I, I'm not too sure actually how the, a lot of the damage is scaled. But for the most, the damage is not what you get to upgrade, which is a bit of a shame because it would be nice to, to feel more empowered. But at the same time, this is a survival game. It's, it's meant to keep you in suspense. It's meant to make you feel like you're struggling. So I think they achieved that quite well. So let's, let's have a gander to see what I do. I think I just checked out a few things because... As I've mentioned in previous videos, I believe upgrading your holsters is the most intelligent move. That way you can use your weapons more freely, and if you get yourself into a situation where you can't get away from a runner to put your bag down and swap, you can just pick the second item and deal some considerable damage. But don't forget to pick up the nail bomb, I don't think you actually can. Or the scissor bomb, you know, it's the same, same theme. And then it tells you how to use it. One is to throw, the other one is to roll it. I cannot emphasize how useful those items are. Uh, they're some of the most fun and intuitive tools you have at your disposal. If you're struggling because there's too many enemies, try and get them all together, throw one of those bombs, there will no longer be any enemies. It will just be uh, uh, crimson mist and you know some, some scarlet soup hanging around, which is always a good thing to see when you're in a tough area because they will take out the, the bloaters, they will take out the clickers. They just, they vaporize things. They're fantastic. Uh, between the bombs and the molotovs, you have two extremely high damage and high function means of attack, which I, I hope you don't waste as often as I do. Because I know how important they are, and I always have a good plan with them, and I always have good intentions, but I generally end up messing up. So, if you can avoid some of my pitfalls and get some better throws, you'll have a lot of success. My, my recommendation would be to always try and have some on you, even if it's just one, just to save it for the Alleluia moment where you need a miracle. And I didn't find myself in any moments like that, which I'm glad, but I had one just in case I did. So this next sequence is the, you know, the title's Graveyard, and it's filled with clickers. And what you can do here, if you want to, is you can take your time, you can crawl, you can throw bottles and bricks, and you can sneak around all of them and get through the gate. There is a certain finesse to it, and personally, it pissed me off. I, I got to the end twice and got screwed by the fact that the AI doesn't respond the way I want it to sometimes. Where if the clickers are too close, they will not open the door. And I'd thrown pretty much everything I had. I was sat there waiting for the clickers to move. And they just kind of came closer to me. They didn't aggro. They just, you know, cut blocked the animation. And I decided to restart and shoot them in the face with a shotgun. Which does work surprisingly well. Um, the cool thing here is, you do start with quite a lot of ammo. And after this point, you can avoid using the ammo for, for quite some time. You have three arrows in your bow, so if you want to get some bow practice in and take people out the old-fashioned way, feel free to do that. It's, it's a good opportunity. But once again, the arrows will break when you hit people. It seems to be random, and if you're a lucky person, your bow will be a lifeline. If you're an unlucky person, your bow will be a big pain in your ass. And um, it doesn't seem like there's any way to, to dictate which it's going to be. 
So this area here, you'll notice there's two clickers, one to my left, one to my right. The one on the left is a death bastard, the one on the right got the bait, and the door is directly in front of us that we need to open. So, if this game worked the way I would like, it would have allowed me to press triangle and just get past this area. But you'll notice, the gate is locked. And it doesn't let you, which brings us to this next situation. So, I believe you give Ellie a leg up so that she can climb over the top and open it, or I think maybe Bill opens it. You know, it's, I've only played this game twice and it's a bit of a blur because it's been, you know, pretty intense. I look how close this clicker is doesn't even aggro. It's just trolling me at this point. And Ellie's face is literally through my body. We are two people joined as one. And you just think to yourself, why doesn't it just cut to a cutscene? Why doesn't it just skip to, to being done? Which would have probably been better and more satisfying, but there is, you know, measure to the madness. And I do believe I killed both of these clickers through impatience. So, pop the pistol on. This clicker's getting pretty close. Wait for it to get into my range so I can get an insta-kill with a shotty. Try not to aggro any more than I have to. Run away from this one so it doesn't get the cheeky instant kill, which is a pain in the ass. And Bill is going to do as much as he can to do some damage. I'm going to leave him to it unless this thing gets too close to me and then I'm going to back up. And you'll notice Bill gets the execution. And we'll see what the game wanted us to do. So the clickers are out of the way. Yeah, Bill opens it. So if Bill had come with Ellie and opened it while the clickers were there, it wouldn't have been a problem. But because the AI has to respond in a certain way, you know, I used more shells than necessary because I didn't lure the clickers away in a, a more functional means. And it's just one of those moments where the game kind of breaks down a little bit. It's not a problem. It's just a finicky, you know, way that it, it wants you to work out a solution. So... This next road, you can immediately see that these are runners that have not been activated. So at this point, you should know that doing the strangulation technique is a silent kill. Always lightly move with the analog and tap triangle as you progress towards the person. That way you will immediately do the, the dash into them and choke. And for some reason, that right there was an aggressive takedown. So this guy aggroed. And I'm not too sure why it does that. Like, did... It, was he about to spot me? Did I somehow give away my, my presence so that it, instead of doing the choke, he pushed him down and stamped on his face? It's another one of those variables that I'm too new to the game to fully understand, but I embraced in my playthrough to get this walkthrough out to people. And uh, that is not a section you're going to be all that struggled or, or taxed with because you have a bow. You could have just shot them all individually with your arrows and, and kind of held your breath and seen which arrows survive. And speaking of arrows, in this section here, there are houses to loot, there are areas to loot, but I'm going to be going through it in a pretty minimalist approach. I'm not going to be looting too much, but there is a, a garage filled with arrows, and you want to get as many as you can, because there's a sequence coming up where the arrows can be a lifesaver. Because they're silent, and anything silent is a weapon. It is, it is the perfect weapon in a game like this. Um, there's a couple of runners in this area. If you come over here, I don't think it actually benefits you. It's a dead end, but I didn't realise this because, you know, my, my first path through this on hard was literally with a shotgun killing everything. But on the walkthrough, I wanted to save my ammo a little bit more. I wanted to give some people some options if they don't have the munitions to go guns blazing. So, for this sequence, I, I kill what I have to, but I get round the majority of the enemies if I can. And the only threat here is the runner. The clicker cannot hear us if we're smart. Clickers are just environmental at this point but he is erratic so you'll notice hit him with an arrow square in the back and this is the moment where we go and check his body ever so tentatively to see if we have wasted an arrow but it was a clean kill so it's not wasted and i think yeah the arrow's good so that arrow was fine we get it back and in this in this garage here i believe on the shelves are more arrows which as I mentioned, very, very good news. But a lot of people have been showing enthusiasm towards the guide, which I'm happy about. I did a couple of silly edit videos yesterday featuring The Last of Us. That I, I thought the titles would say enough to tell people what they were, but some people just, I don't know, 
do people not read things? Do they just click and stare at the flashing colours? Because I, d I did a video that was The Last of Us in 20 seconds, which was a silly video that had nothing to do with the story, and a bunch of people seem to think that it's ruined my playthrough for them, it's ruined my guide. And that had zero context to anything. All it was was a montage of Joel doing really bad things to bad people. That was it, you know? And some people just miss the point completely, which is the internet in a nutshell. <laughs> and it doesn't really bother me. I just... I'm baffled. I'm, I'm always baffled by, by things we do in, in you know, with our, our digital selves. Like, the concept of asking a question that you could Google in the same time and get an answer without having to wait is another thing that baffles me. And there's an answer for that in my my view, and that is that you want to get a personal connection with the person you're asking the question, which is completely understandable and human, but at the same time, you could kind of get the answer via other means. So, you know, humanity, interesting folk. But this sequence here, there's a bunch of clickers in this house. You can explore it if you want to. I'm going to be moving and skipping the majority. I'll pick some stuff if I can see it, but I'm not going to go out of my way to risk death just to try and pick up some pills or, or some scrap metal. Like, there are a handful of safes in the game, and a few of them I hadn't found when I recorded this. I've actually found some, and I will be missing quite a lot of them. So if you know where the safes are, I would implore you to use them, because they're generally filled with goodies. I don't know if they change position or if they disappear on the harder difficulties. I don't know if that has anything to do with the loot. I don't think it does, but as I've mentioned, like I, this was recorded the second day the game was out. And as much as I, I, I partake and, and I give forth the skills that I learnt in my time with the game, I do not know everything. And a lot of the things that I'm saying are purely based on my own speculation when it comes to certain nuances of the game. And in a couple of months, people will have figured things out, stuff will be from rumour to speculation to fact, and we'll know a lot more. But as it stands, you know, it's, it's all on monkey see, monkey do at this moment. So just take a lot of this information with a pinch of salt, unless I tell you... You know, your dog, this is how this mechanic works in my experience. But what's happening here is we're moving towards this house. Inside this house there's going to be another story element. Something that Bill's already mentioned if you're paying attention. And it's, it's a pretty good sequence. It's also a, a fantastic opportunity to loot. And I've, I've mentioned previously that the loot in this game is, is great. It's, it's a fun idea and it makes exploring fun. I just wish it was more developed and... I was with my buddy Aiden earlier on today, and he's mentioned a game called State of Decay, which I look I thought looked like an arcade ripoff of this game, and it turns out it's a really really good title. So I'm probably going to be checking that out, and the loot on that game sounds pretty crazy. So you know we we're, we're spoiled for our Walking Dead esque zombie survival games at this point, even though the zombies on this are probably not technically zombies, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, and this house apparently is the wrong house. I believe it might be the next one where we see the, the plot part, so do bear with me folks. As I mentioned, a lot of this game is a blur. But that's, you know, that's it's one of the casualties of, of making walkthroughs as quick as you can. You know, you're not going to have the same level of experience with the game. You know, I mean, look at my Dark Souls walkthrough compared to my experience with the game now. My Dark Souls walkthrough is perfect for what it is. It's a very simple way of beating that game with overpowered gear. And my knowledge back then was, was infant-like compared to what it is now, just through sheer experience. But you know, it's the nature of the beast. And thank you for watching anyhow. And you take care now.